Well, folks, as you can see, version 5 is a big change from the previous versions. And given what the physics calculations say and what I've done here, I'm not sure I can get it significantly better. Unfortunately, it doesn't produce much torque. And as you'll see in this video, I can barely turn some paper turbines I made. First, I'll show you how it's built, then the test results. To start with, I picked up some really high temperature insulation, this rock cell, basically a mineral wool. I also had this aluminum pipe laying around. So here's a 34 inch long pipe for version 5. It's uh, aluminum, uh, one, and eighth, one and one eighth inch inner diameter. What I've done is I cut a uh, three and a half inch slit for the absorber chamber uh, lengthwise and then I uh, peeled the pieces back and did some trimming and then painted the inside black. So that's where the absorber is going to be going inside there. So the absorber for this version 5 is going to be these uh, fly netting screens. This is aluminum fly netting. I've simply painted uh, one side uh, black using this barbecue and stove paint. And uh, the whole idea is that the only way the air can get from one end of the tube to the other end of the tube is if it goes through the netting. That way all the air that passes through will have gotten um, as close to the absorber as the, uh, you know, the radius of one of these holes. Okay, so here's the first of the screen layers in place. A little bit messy, but I wanted to plug all the air gaps so you can kind of make out the screen there. I put this flashlight on it. Okay, that's the second screen layer in place there. Kind of hard to tell. I just dabbed it in with four little uh, pieces, dabs there, and some more in the front. So it's not touching the second layer, but the air has to pass through it. I've also put uh, some silicone caulking all along the edge here uh, um, because I, when I put the glazing down on top, I wanted to act as kind of a gasket. I don't really want the glazing in touch with the aluminum because that would uh, contribute to a heat loss out the front. So sort of an insulator. The um, silicone I'm using is just this kitchen and bath silicone right here, silicone one. It's good to 400 Fahrenheit or 205 Celsius. So just thought I'd give you some idea of what the uh, air is going to see when it comes through this thing. And then finally the glazing is attached just using silicone. And now you can see the uh, reflector on there. And I also have a support here for, um, for mounting it all. So next, just to put the insulation on. Here's the finished result outside. I've put all the rock cell mineral insulation, mineral wool type insulation, on and wrapped it up nicely in plastic. Here's the test setup. You can definitely feel heat coming out of the top, but I can also see smoke here as the caulking is... I'm not sure if it's the caulking or the carpet tape, but something there is burning. Well guys, there's definitely smoke coming out of this chimney. <laughs> uh, but not, not really any, um, any airflow to speak of. Definitely hot air, I could feel it coming out. If I go to the bottom here, underneath... It's not, a little bit of heat I can feel inside, nothing much. On my first day of testing I had smoke coming out of the pipe because some of the smoke from the melting or burning plastic was getting sucked into the pipe at the bottom, which was a good thing, otherwise I wouldn't have seen any result at the top. As you can see I also tried with a funnel on top to increase output speed and pressure. For the second day of testing I made these uh, small, very lightweight turbines out of paper and sewing needles. I also made this uh, cardboard enclosure here to minimize wind effects. Here I am testing with the turbines. Each time I move one side of a turbine over the outlet from the funnel, I get a little rotation. But as you can see, there isn't a lot of torque being produced here, and the physics calculations indicate there wouldn't be either. The torque I am getting didn't start happening until the entire pipe got very hot. Which makes sense, since with a hotter pipe, the air loses less heat to the pipe as it rises and it's the insulation which allows the pipe to get that hot. Plus, I read online that solar updraft towers are supposed to be horribly inefficient compared to other types of solar, so I'm not sure I'm going to bother with the version 6. It was a lot of fun and a great learning experience doing it, though. Plus, I now have all that high temperature insulation which can be used for things like a solar oven cooker or solar air heater. Well, thanks for watching. Sorry it didn't work out to anything too exciting. That's the way these experiments go sometimes. Hopefully you've learned a few things that'll help you in your own experimenting. Be sure and check out all the things that did work on my YouTube channel, Rimstar.org, including solar cookers, Van de Graaff machines, and others. Have a good one!